Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I wanted to do the cookie book tag, which I saw over on the Joy of Reading um, YouTube channel. And I really liked the questions in this tag, and I thought I could feature some books I may not have talked about as much as others. So I've got my uh, tea and cookies here, and I'm going to just uh, go through this list of 10 questions. And if you'd like to play along, I'll put the questions in the description and you can comment your answers or even uh, do your own video if you like. Question number one is Chocolate Chip, a great American classic. I actually thought of three books for this. The first one being This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I feel like this book is a bit underrated compared to The Great Gatsby. It took me a couple of tries to get into it, but I really enjoyed the um, coming-of-age story about this young man who um, goes to college, but he's not really uh, committed to any particular line of study, and he kind of drifts through life, falling in love many times, and watching his friends uh, make various choices, some of them bad choices. It's just a very uh, introspective book. There's a bit of surrealism in it as well. I just really enjoyed it and I think it is, uh, it certainly is very much focused on a certain aspect of American history, but I really think it's worth reading. A couple of other American classics I wanted to mention were uh, the Little House series. In particular, Little House in the Big Woods, which is the first book, and I actually really loved uh, Farmer Boy as well, which is about Laura's uh, husband-to-be, his childhood. Um, great books. I would say these definitely fall sort of into the American legend category. Obviously, the history is you know told through the eyes of a child, and it's very simplified. Um, but I do enjoy these books, and I think they are definitely classics. Um, for what they are. And then, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Moby Dick by Herman Melville. This was another book that took me two tries to read. I think it's an incredible allegory and illustration of the world in miniature. And in miniature, in this case, means on this ship, which is ruled by this autocratic uh, Captain Ahab. And what's really so fascinating is you have a lot of contrast in this book between that more primal, uh, hierarchical type of social structure and hero worship and all of these things that the American uh, philosophy is supposed to be against, right? So that's just a fraction of what makes this book great, but I do think it is a worthy American classic. Okay, I promise I didn't pick like three books for all of these answers, but I just couldn't pick one American classic. I think there's just so many great ones. Okay, question number two is sugar, as in sugar cookie, a work that gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. For this book, I really had to go back to the Chronicles of Narnia series, and in particular, The Silver Chair. Uh, this is a pretty creepy cover, but this is the one I grew up with. Uh, the Silver Chair is by far my favorite book in the series, and I know it's it's one of those that people may not like as much as some of the other books featuring the Pevensey siblings, but I really enjoyed the friendship between Eustace and Jill in The Silver Chair and the uh, funny but loyal friend Puddleglum, whom they meet, and uh, their more traditional hero's quest from uh, the the overworld to the underworld. I just think it's a great book. I get great warm fuzzy feelings when I read it and I need to reread it soon. So yeah, the silver chair. Uh, question number three is oatmeal, a work that makes you think of home. And again, I thought of a couple of different books for this, but I'll just mention one and that is The Black Stallion by Walter Farley. This is a book I read when I was very young. I, re I vividly remember reading this 
in our storage room where I had a little desk and I would read this in like the pitch black of this den that I'd set up with a little fake kerosene lamp. I did enjoy this story quite a bit. It's not necessarily a big favorite, but it does remind me of home. Question number four is gingerbread, your favorite fairy tale or folk tale? Whenever I'm asked this question, I definitely have to say The Wild Swans by Hans Christian Andersen. The most memorable fairy tale I've ever read. It's a little strange. It's about this girl who... Basically, it's the wicked stepmother story and her brothers are turned into swans and she has to knit them sweaters to turn them back into humans. It's a very creative, very strange story, but I was definitely motivated by the the heroine in this book. Um, I think it's great to have fairy tales where, you know, somebody's just doing what they can and it's not necessarily a big story of heroics, but somebody has to make a sacrifice of some kind. So there's a lot more to it than that, but um, that's the gist of it. Another fairy tale I love is uh, The Nutcracker. Although, to be honest, without the ballet, maybe not as much. I did read these two versions, the original story by E.T.A. Hoffman and the adaptation by Alexander Dumas. I think Dumas's story is a little more straightforward, a little cleaner. But a Hoffman's story is extremely quirky, and I think a lot of people would get a kick out of it. So if you haven't read these, definitely recommended. Um, and I just, I love the Nutcracker concept. It's a great fairy tale. Question number five is Oreo, a supporting character that steals the story, just like the cream filling. <laughs> um... Does anyone remember, like, the mega stuff Oreos that came out a couple years ago? Yeah, that that's exactly the kind of Oreo that I like. Okay, so supporting character, I don't know if Van Helsing from Dracula counts as supporting. I'm not really sure if he's a major character or a supporting character, but either way, i um, big fan of Van Helsing, the uh, professor who helps... Jonathan and Mina defeat Dracula. Um, yeah, he's really cool. Another character, well, as far as just in general, any Dickens character uh, tends to be a lot more interesting than the main characters. I don't know why that is, but uh, he certainly is really good at the supporting characters. So uh, yeah, pretty much any any Dickens supporting character. Question number six is Biscuit, a great British classic. I love British literature. It was the first classic literature I fell in love with. Really hard to choose just one, but I think I'm going to have to go with my perennial favorite, which is Sherlock Holmes, the original series. Uh, I think the Sherlock Holmes series is absolutely remarkable because not only does it span, you know, 64 stories four of which are novels, but it really spans the whole gamut of Victorian society, um, different settings, different dilemmas, a lot of social issues. And, you know, some of the stories are pretty dated, but by and large, uh, Sherlock Holmes is certainly a great British classic and has influenced so many other series, not just the detective genre, but probably, you know, spy um, spy series and and others not to mention uh, making the character of a outsider a loner central and even popular in literature i would say start with the short stories maybe a scandal in bohemia and uh, maybe save the novels for later unless you're like really committed to reading it in chronological order um, I think the short stories are a lot stronger than the novels. Okay, question number seven. A work you feel makes a difference. Um, I found this to be a very difficult question. I actually had to come back to it at the end after I'd answered the other questions. 
it's really hard because I don't know, like, there are definitely books that focus on social topics. There's books that have been extremely influential, but I don't know if that really is what the question's asking. So I just went with The Lord of the Rings, which may be kind of a strange choice, but... I feel like The Lord of the Rings is, to me, the most perfect book in terms of how it's written, the cast of characters, the types of characters, the perfection of the traditional hero's journey. And there's a lot of other things in here that I think have been very influential. Obviously, the fantasy genre has pretty much been uh, heavily inspired by Tolkien it's resurrected a lot of uh, ancient or interest in those more ancient legends. There's a lot of Catholic symbolism in here. I'm not Catholic, but I do find that interesting. And I think it's a beautiful allegory of the era Tolkien lived in. I know that he did not intentionally write an allegory, but I think this book does mirror the conflict and uh, tension also the combination of those old epics with more modern moral sensibilities and, you know, gray characters like Boromir, Gollum, and uh, others. So, yeah, I think this book has made a huge difference. It's made a big difference in my life. I have found a lot of community through this book, and I've also... I've also come to love poetry through The Lord of the Rings. So, yeah, that's a great book. Um, let's see. Question number eight is Shortbread, a writer that is addicting. So, um, I think my instant answer for this was Agatha Christie. I read her books when I was about 12, and her books are definitely addicting. I mean, I have the only book I have by her actually is The Thirteen Problems, which is a collection of Miss Marple short stories. Um, but these are great short stories. Most of the novels are really good. Very much uh, genre fiction, very repetitive, predictable, stereotypical even, um, but definitely addicting. Like she knew how to really work that formula and get you to keep reading and reading and reading. I've read most of her books, probably two-thirds or more. So, yeah, Agatha Christie. And then the other author I would say is addicting for me personally is Franz Kafka. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I just find his universe, so to speak, very addicting, very interesting, relatable. I've read all of his fiction at this point, so... Okay, question number nine. Black and white. A work you feel you are not sure if you like or dislike. I really do tend to have pretty definite opinions about the books I read, so this was very hard for me to think of one. I would have to say Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. I would say overall I like this book, but it had a very dark and ambiguous ending, which I didn't like. I mean, overall, I would say I like it, but if I would have to pick one book that kind of falls in that iffy area for me, it's probably this book. I'm going to read it again at some point, and I think it's a great mystery if you're into that. Question number 10 is Dog Treat, your favorite literary animal. Uh, so with this one, I'm going to have to go with the griffin from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, he's kind of a gruff character, but he's kind of charming too. And uh, I just think he's one of the underrated animals from Alice in Wonderland. All right, so there's one last question, which is, what is your favorite cookie or biscuit? And I don't really have a favorite cookie. <laughs> I like all cookies pretty much. Um, but I'm especially craving macarons right now. So it's yeah. the first thing I want to get when the shutdown lifts and I might have to order some before then. Yeah, so this was a really fun tag. Uh, definitely let me know if you fill it out on your channel or again, you can do it in the comments if you like. Um, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.